What's going on, guys? My name is Steve Kinney. I'm a producer, engineer, and content creator here in Nashville, Tennessee. So far up to this point on the channel, I've mainly covered plugins that recreate the look, the feel, and the workflow of a real-life piece of gear. Take, for example, the UAD 1176 or the LA-2A. On the screen, it looks like 1176, sounds like 1176, and you got to fool with it like an 1176. Now this is all well and good, but what if you want to work faster? What if you want to work more creatively? So for today's journey through the wild jungle of audio plugins, we're going to look no further than Safari pedals. But before we do, make sure that you subscribe to the channel for all things UAD, Apollo, and Luna. Hit the like button for me, help me in the algorithm. I greatly appreciate it. And if you find something interesting throughout the video, please leave a comment below. So the first thing that you're going to notice with Safari Pedals uh, plugin lineup is that a lot of the plugins are creative plugins. They're going to be delays, reverbs, drives, tape simulation. Now, obviously, the second thing you're going to notice right away is the iconic look. Every plugin looks like a guitar pedal. That's not really point number two. Point number two is the workflow. Now, similar to a guitar pedal, the workflow is a lot like a guitar pedal, which means all of the controls are going to do something that's overall changing the sonic scope faster. Take, for example, this flamenco verb, which is really cool sounding. You're changing multiple things at once when you're fiddling with just one knob. Take, for example, the time knob. In position one, it's kind of like a room reverb sound. As you scroll through, you're actually changing the model that they're modeling, which brings me to point number three. The way that these pedals are designed, they're not designed to emulate any sort of particular gear. Rather, they're aimed at emulating entire signal chains all really quickly. So you can do the creative work much faster. Now, my favorite example of the workflow being so much faster is none other than their Time Machine plugin. And the way it works is incredibly simple. You get four choices. You get eras, 50s, 60s, 70s, or 80s, how much compression, input, output to obviously drive it more, and then you get blend and noise. Now, you can hear it right now, noise adding a ton of noise into the circuit. And you can hear as I go through the eras that the noise changes. So let's take a quick listen to this one on drums. The really interesting thing here about jumping through the eras is that obviously you're making massive changes across the board, right? Not only from the EQ and sonic spectrum of the EQ, uh, but also the compression. And the thing is, is that all of these choices would take a lot of different processors if you were to try to use traditionally modeled plugins. You'd have to know how to build that chain. So if you're someone who is new to audio production, these plugins should immediately jump out at you and grab your attention because they're taking all of the guesswork and all of the fooling around kind of out of the picture here and you get to create faster. Songwriters, same thing. If you're a songwriter, you do your own demos at home, these plugins are gonna be a fantastic choice for you. Under the hood, there's still analog modeled hardware in there. There's still all of those same things, but they're all kind of lumped together in a very creative way. So let's take a look at a few of these plugins and kind of get a sense of how quickly you can dial things in. First, I'm gonna play a little bit of the track. This track is Hubby and Honky Tonk by Katrina Burgoyne. It's out now. Go check it out. It's on Spotify, Apple Music. I'm at my hubby in a honky tonk. In around 10 o'clock Come up and ask me what drink I want All right, cool. Um, really great, but what if I wanted to add more reverb to the drums? First, I'm going to create a new bus. Always bus your effects. 
First, let's check out Dirty Dog Reverb. So first things first, you do have oversampling. That's in, uh, I think, pretty much every one of their plugins, which is cool if you're into that sort of thing, but it does impact the sound. So you might want it on, you might want it off. Trust your ears. The first thing about this plugin, you've got a drive before the reverb and then a drive after the reverb. Obviously, you can kind of blend between the two, but the thing that's interesting is think about this. If you were to recreate this chain using traditionally modeled plugins, you'd have to add some sort of a drive, which would be a choice that you would have to make. And then you'd also have to choose to drive it after the fact. So that's two extra plugins uh, going into the reverb. And then, of course, you'd have to choose what reverb you're going to go with. It's also got a gate that you can use either before or after, which again is another circuit that you'd have to kind of add into the picture. So really quickly, you've got all of it just right in one effect choice, which makes the workflow really quick. So let's kind of just dial in something. We're going to do just the sound of the effect. Uh, to kind of fool around with it, see how it sounds. This is going absolutely nuts. So let's turn off a couple things here. Uh, if you click on the red icon, the red LED icon, that's gonna turn off the signal or the processor in the signal. So we're gonna turn off post drive for now, and we're gonna start with pre drive all the way down. And we're gonna fool around with this time knob. And you can hear as I'm cycling through this time circuit, you can hear that it, the distinct character of the reverb is changing dramatically. All right, cool. So now we're 100% wet on our effect. Let's blend it in with the original drum. That's pretty cool. All right, let's hear it with the track now. I met my hubby in a honky tonk. He scooted in around 10 o'clock. Come up and ask me what drink I want. I caught him, I am my big dog. Yeah, cool. So just like that, kind of dialed in something really quick. Let's keep fooling around with it. So the gate cleaned it up quite a bit. Kind of keeps the wash of the hi-hat out. But the moment that he stole my heart was when he Tell you what, I really like that. I wish I had this plugin when I was mixing it. <laughs> Ladybug reverb is something that's supposed to sound super vintage and old. So let's try this one out with the drums. Oh, yeah. Okay, with this one, you've got a blend knob right here. Now what's interesting about this is you got a blend knob down here and a blend knob up here. If you take this blend down, you're kind of blending in the original dry signal. Um, now if you're pulling this down, you're blending in that original dry signal, but it sounds like it's also gaining up the signal and driving it. Um, so you are getting some of that kind of character there versus just clean sound down here. Um, and then you also have a width control knob turn off the lo-fi altogether. It 
Something that's interesting I read, it might have been in the manual for this plugin, um, but I think with a lot of them, if you pull the width all the way down, you're kind of going back to the original hardware that they modeled. So that's a really cool sounding plate verb and spring as well. Yeah, this is definitely not the plugin choice that I would use for this track, but this obviously gives you that character that you're looking for when you're going for a spring or a plate, and it does hit instantly, super quickly. Flamenco verb, what you got? All right, so this has got another drive circuit, pre-delay, you got high pass, low pass, width. Pre-delay. High pass. Low pass. All right, that width control really kind of brings out a lot of interesting character. Sometimes using those spatial kind of things can get funky, but they're handy when you want to sit the effect in a mix and make it kind of stand out. So I love that they keep in including this throughout the different uh, throughout the different plugin models. Instantly, just really cool. Uh, this one is another one of those where the time changes whatever signal chain they would have come up with. Okay, so you've got an original, so you've got a modeled room sound, you've got a plate, 140 plate. Everybody should know what the 140 plate is. Special spring verb, and then a church in Paris. So this is the one that's in Paris. I was wrong earlier. Yeah, okay, cool. Hey, look, kids, always read the manuals. The manuals will tell you so much stuff. So let's go through these sounds real quick again on the flamenco verb. Plate. Spring verb. Obviously, that's going to be the Paris location. That's really cool. That's kind of cool. That's just, that kind of reminds me of like a Johnny Cash thing, right? You just get like this old springy nasty reverb. That's cool. Rhino verb. So let's try this one out. We're gonna want this completely wet again cause we are rocking an effect bus. So here's the drums again.
interesting. It sounds like some of the signal still comes through even at 100%. So if you're chasing a sound, if you're looking to get character, chances are you're going to get there a million times quicker using Safari pedals than you would if you were to try to recreate the wheel using the vintage modeled specific plugins. Again, it takes all of the guesswork out. You just grab one of these plugins, spit it into your doll, and you can start working something really quickly. Let's try something different here. Let's check out a delay pedal now. So what do we got? So we got time, sync. We wanna sync this to the project for sure. It does have sync, that's good. It tells you what it is when you hover over it. I'm in my hubby, I'm in my hubby, I'm... Let's bring those repeats down. I'm my hubby, I'm... High pass, where's our low pass? Let's bring that up a bit. I'm my hubby. I'm in my hubby, I'm in my hubby, he freaking loves me. It's pretty cool. And let's take this width knob down. I'm in my hubby, I'm in my hubby, I'm in my hubby, he freaking loves me. All right, this sounds really cool, just immediately. And that sounds kind of digitally to me. Um, it just sounds kind of cool. And it also has this random button that does something really weird. Let's listen to that. All right, now the way I have it kind of automated and mixed inside of the session, obviously, is not going to work out right for this one. But it is really cool if you're trying to get something interesting. You don't have to think about it. Press one button, boom, you're there. Fox Echo Chorus. Let's check this one out. So we're gonna to wanna to make sure blend is all the way up here again. So you've got a couple things here. You got chorus and echo, S on S. Ah, okay. I'm in my hubby, I'm in my hubby, I'm in my hubby, he freaking loves me. I'm in my hubby, I'm in my hubby, he freaking loves me. Cool. So it does have like that spring kind of thing modeled in there. I'm in my hubby, I'm in my hubby, I'm in my hubby, he freaking loves me. I'm in my hubby. I mean, that's really cool, really interesting uh, already. So let's throw that in the context here. I mean, we're overdoing it by a lot, but it's still sounding really cool. All right, now let's check out a few that you'd probably want to use on like your master bus or maybe a drum bus. In this case, we're going to go after rabbit tape. Now, I think this is a ton of fun. It's modeled after a reel to reel and you've got a cassette sound here. You've got a blend, you've got wow, all the stuff that you'd normally want on your tape choices. Uh, let's hear how it sounds. This is reel to reel. Okay, so Grit is gonna add more character. Let's listen to that. Let's listen to it in cassette. You can immediately hear in cassette too, you've also changed the entire sonic picture of it just immediately. Uh, EQ, et cetera. Another oversampling LED right here.
Obviously you can drive into it more. You've got wow, let's see what that does. Fun fact about using WoW in uh, tape sim plugins, less is more, uh, unless you're going for like an obvious like effect. But if you're trying to just give like that warmth and character of tape, right? Just a little kiss of this flavor is gonna really kind of sell the effect, right? Um, and then same thing with Flutter. Now let's check out width. That's really cool, really cool. Let's fool around with it in context. Using the width control just brings that sonic uh, stereo spread just and just cranks the stereo spread to 11. Again, I'm really glad that they keep including that width knob because sometimes that makes the effect uh, easier to blend in with the rest of the mix. So that's really cool. Another one that might be really good on the drum bus here is uh, owl control. Now, again, with all of these plugins, you're noticing kind of a very similar thing happening where if you change one of these effect uh, controls and parameters, you're changing everything. Uh, you're swapping out for maybe a different compressor, maybe a different EQ, and all of that kind of stuff is under the hood. So really clever and you can work really fast. That sounded pretty cool. That's cool. You got this ratio knob as well. I see this plugin as being one of my favorites already just from how analog it sounds and I don't have to think about what I'm doing. Um, you know, you just kind of audition through here, move, move quick, move faster, it's great. All right, one question that I often get from people is about mastering and, uh, you know, there's tons of different tools out there for mastering. And uh, I don't like to talk about mastering, actually, <laughs> because there's a lot of myths. There's a lot of misconceptions um, and it's kind of a hard topic. But on your wild safari journey, there's a plugin called Lion Master and Lion Master is really cool. It really lets you push the volume. Uh, lets you kind of get more oomph out of your track and it does it really simply so you don't have to build a mastering chain. So check us out. You got True Peak. Bring that down. So here we go. Let's listen to what we can do with the whole mix as a whole.
So like I'm cranking this input knob and I don't know if you're watching up here in the top right corner, you can see where the peaks are actually hitting. And um, yeah, I'm trying to make sure that they don't go above a certain threshold and let's just watch. I'm in my hubby, I'm in my hubby, I'm in my hubby, you freaking love I mean, I've obviously overdone it here, but you get the point. I'm in my hubby, I'm in my hubby, I'm in my hubby, you freaking lost me. I'm in my hubby, I'm in my hubby, you know, honky tonk, yeah. Here's a two-step and tall glass of water, honey. I've taken something that's already really loud and I've pushed it even louder. Lion Mastering, I love you. You're a great plug-in. Awesome, awesome stuff. Love the saturation knob. Uh, this little kind of shelf gain thing is, is pretty handy as well too. Sometimes when you start to push the volume, uh, some of the frequencies and stuff could get a bit overwhelming. Uh, so it's nice to have that in there and width control. Obviously, that's always fun to fool around with. Use it at your own detriment or benefit. But again, love that it's in there. One quick look at this whole era thing. I, I think this is pretty interesting if you're to throw it on your uh, master bus, if you wanted your whole track to sound old, this is what it would sound like. I'm in my hubby. I'm in my hubby. I'm in my hubby. You freaking lost me. I'm in my hubby. Look, I'm a sucker for the 80s, and that kind of does have that 80s sound right away. Time Machine is fantastic as an effect, obviously, and it does a great job too. It's really easy to use. So Safari Pedals knocking it out of the park. All right, so Safari Pedals uh, went on a wild escapade around the plugin landscape. And uh, yeah, I think they're freaking cool. If you're a songwriter and you're not really interested in becoming a producer or engineer, these plugins are going to get you to the end result a million times faster than, especially, again, if you're not really interested in learning about the history of an 1176 or an LA-2A or building out your own chains. Grab these plugins. They sound brilliant. But for producers, mix engineers, master engineers, right? Like you guys are looking for something creative, something new to try. You got to check out Safari Pedals. All of the sounds packed under the hood here are instant classics, so uh, check them out. Leave your comments down below. Let me know what you guys think of Safari Pedals so far, if you've tried them. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel for all things UAD, Apollo, and Luna. To support the channel further, go to thestevekinney.com where you can find my latest presets and mix templates or to book one-on-one -on -one time with me directly. I really appreciate you guys watching. Cheers.